Hey, what's up? My name's Dustin, and I'm a developer and technical evangelist here at Treehouse. Today, I want to take you through setting up a gulp file for your project or app. But what exactly is gulp? Well, gulp is a JavaScript toolkit to automate and enhance your workflow. But what exactly does that even mean? Have you ever taken a look at someone else's code and noticed that everything was minified? Or maybe you just took a look at their style sheet and saw a ton of prefixers in there. Surely the developer didn't write that themselves, right? More than likely, they used something like Gulp to automate that stuff for them. Gulp is pretty powerful, and today I want to take you through setting up your first Gulp file. It's actually pretty simple. Take a look at the teacher's notes or description of this video to get a link to our GitHub repo for this project. While this will be a step-by-step -step guide, if you get stuck at any time along the way, you can refer back to this repo to look at the code. Additionally, you can check out teamtreehouse.com forward slash blog forward slash gulp file dash setup for a written version of this tutorial, which is also a step-by-step -step guide. I would like to note that in order to understand this content comfortably, it's recommended that you have a basic understanding of JavaScript as well as Node.js and NPM. Links to these resources can be found below in the teacher's notes or description of the video. So let's get started. The first thing I'll do is set up a folder on my desktop. You can create this folder anywhere you'd like. I'll name it gulp file dash setup and then drag it to my text editor. The first thing we'll want to do is download all of our dependencies for this project via NPM. And the easiest way we can do that is by opening up a terminal and creating a package.json file for us. You can do this by running npm init-y. And it'll basically spin up a boilerplate package.json file for us with everything we'll need to get started. Next, we'll want to install our dependencies. But doing so will create a node modules folder, which is going to be full of many, many files and folders. So we'd want to ignore this we can create a dot git ignore file and inside just write node underscore modules. And should we track this project with git in the future, it'll ignore this folder for us. We can close out of that file and head back to our terminal and we can begin installing our packages. We can write npm install followed by our package names. For this project, we'll use gulp, gulp sass, sass, Gulp Clean CSS, Gulp Auto Prefixer, and Gulp Terser. Once you have that typed out, just press Enter and your terminal will begin installing these packages for you. This process shouldn't take very long, and as soon as it's finished, your package.json file should update with a list of all your new dependencies and their version numbers. Don't worry if your version numbers are different from mine, that is totally okay. So let's go over these packages briefly. The gulp package will give us access to all the things we need with gulp. Gulp sass as well as sass will compile our scss to css. Our gulp clean css will minify our css. And gulp auto prefixer will automatically add our prefixers to our code. And lastly, gulp terser will minify our javascript. Next, let's close out of our terminal. We won't need that for now. And the next thing we'll want to do is create our actual gulp file. And we can call this gulpfile.js. And then press enter. And I'm going to move my gulp file to the right of my text editor so that I can see my package.json file. And I'll also close my explorer window so that I have a little bit more space to work with. The first thing we'll want to do inside of our gulp file is destructure some things from the gulp package itself. So we'll destructure the source, which I'll spell SRC, the destination, DEST, series, and watch. And these will require gulp. Next, let's set up our variables for our SCSS, auto prefixers, and minifying our CSS. We can name these variables anything we'd like, but if you're following along and haven't used gulp before, it's probably a good idea to use what I'm using here so that you're not confused along the way. 
Our first variable we'll call SCSS, and it will require the gulp SAS package, which requires the SAS package. And this will compile our SCSS into CSS for us. Next, we'll want to set up a variable for our auto prefixer. So we can call that auto prefixer, and it will require gulp auto prefixer. And this will automatically add prefixers to all of our compiled CSS. And lastly, we'll want to minify our CSS. So we can set up a variable for CSS minify that will require gulp clean CSS. And now we have all of our variables we'll need for our styles. So let's work on our scripts next. Scripts will be easy. We're just going to minify our JavaScript. So we can set up a variable for JS minify, and it requires gulp terser. And now we have all the variables we need. We have scss, auto prefixer, css minify, and js minify. So now we can set up a function for our styles as well as a function for our scripts. We'll do function styles, and we'll leave it empty for now. And then we'll write function scripts, and we'll also leave that one empty for now. I'm going to close out of my package.json file because we don't need this anymore. But next, we should set up our directory structure. So in the root of our project, I'll set up a new folder, and I'll call it frontend. And inside of frontend, I will set up another new folder, and I'll name that one src which is short for source. And then I'll set up one more folder inside a front end called dist, D-I-S-T, which is short for distribution. Inside of the source folder, I'll create a folder for our styles, as well as a folder for our scripts. And now we have our basic folder structure that we'll need to get started with Gulp. Now we can begin to work inside of the functions that we created. Inside the styles function, we'll want to return. And what we're returning is the source. Basically, the source is going to be a path to where we want to look for these changes so that we can apply our compiler, our auto prefixer, and our minifier. So inside of the source, we'll type in front end forward slash source forward slash styles. And we want to grab every folder or file in this path that has a .scss file inside. And we can do that by writing asterisk asterisk forward slash asterisk .scss. Now that we have a path to our styles, what we want to do now is call those variables that we set up as methods. And we can chain this on to our source by typing .pipe as a method, and inside of that, writing out our variable as a method. So scss We'll compile our SCSS to CSS. Then we can dot pipe auto prefixer, which will take that compiled CSS and add prefixers to it. And then lastly, we can pipe on CSS minify to minify the compiled CSS with auto prefixers in them. And we used our SCSS variable, auto prefixer variable, and our CSS minify variable. The last thing we'll want to do is, once we grab our source and make all those changes, where do we want to put the file? So now we'll use the destination package that we grabbed from Gulp earlier. And we can chain that on by doing another dot pipe. And the first method in there will be dest. And inside of that, we just give it a path to where we want to place the file. So we can do front end forward slash dist forward slash styles. Now this styles folder inside dist is not created yet, but it'll do that for us. Before we move on to our scripts, I want to mention that inside of the auto prefixer method in our styles function, we will need to write last two versions as a string in order to get this package to work. Once that's finished, we can start working on our scripts function, which will behave pretty similarly to the styles one that we just set up. So we'll return the source which will be front end forward slash source forward slash scripts forward slash asterisk asterisk forward slash asterisk dot js. And then we can pipe on our JavaScript minify. And since that's the only thing that we're doing with the JavaScript, 
we can go ahead and just pipe on our destination. The destination for our JavaScript will be front end forward slash dist forward slash scripts. And that is it for our scripts and styles functions. If you're used to JavaScript, you'll know by now that these functions don't actually do anything until we call them. So we'll need to set up a watch function to watch for these changes in these files and then run these functions. So we can call this watch task. And next we can call our watch method that we grabbed from Gulp earlier. And this method will take two parameters. The first is a path to the files that we want to watch and then what we want to do when a change is detected. Since we're watching the styles and the scripts, we can set these file paths up in an array. So the first item in the array will be the source to our styles. And the second item will be a source to our scripts. So I'll copy and paste those there. I'll add a comma. And our second parameter will be running the styles and scripts functions. And the way that we can run both of these is by using the series package that we got from Gulp earlier. Series is just a method that can run multiple functions at once. So we can write series and then call our styles and scripts functions inside. And we don't have to include the parentheses on these. So just make sure that you write series and in the name of the functions inside. And that's going to be it for our gulp file. The only thing left to do now is to export it. So we can do that by writing exports dot default equals and we'll do series again to call all of the functions that we created styles scripts and watch task and now our file is complete we called the watch task function the scripts function and the styles function which use all the variables we set up now that our gulp file is complete you can save it and we can open up our package.json file we'll need to be able to call the gulp file somehow so this is how we can do that. Under scripts, you can erase that test that is in there and we can replace it with start. And inside the start command, we can run npm install and gulp. npm install will just install all the dependencies should you clone this project from a repository. Gulp is the command that'll actually run our gulp file. So once that's saved, you can close out of everything and open up your terminal. Inside your terminal, you want to run npm start, which is the name of the command that we just set up. And then your terminal will begin running your gulp file. And it should look pretty similar to what I have here, where it calls the styles, scripts, and watch task functions. Inside of front end, source, and then styles, let's create a new file. We can call this app.scss. And we could write some standard CSS in here. Let's do margin zero, padding zero, and we can set box sizing to border box. We can hit save and you'll notice the terminal update. And now inside of front end and dist, we have a new folder called styles with an app.css file in there and everything's minified. And if you look closely, you'll see some prefixers in there that were handled for us automatically. Pretty neat, right? Let's test our JavaScript and see if that minifies for us. So back inside of front end and source, we'll set up a new file inside of our scripts folder and we'll name this app.js. In here, we can set up a variable that's equal to an object. Let's call this user. We'll give it a name of John Smith and we'll set his age to 50. We can hit save and we'll notice our terminal updating again. So now inside of our dist folder, we have a scripts folder. And in there we should have app.js and everything's minified. Pretty neat. It did all that for us with just a few bits of code in our gulp file. And there you go. We just set up our first gulp file from scratch and it wasn't that hard. Don't be afraid to check out the Gulp.js documentation for a list of other packages that they offer. The types of Gulp files you create for your projects and apps can be endless. You can create something pretty powerful. If you create something awesome, don't be afraid to share your link to your repository through GitHub. 
Or if you are a tech degree student, you could share your projects through our private Slack channels. If anything that we discussed in this video is a little far outside of your scope of knowledge currently, make sure to check out the teacher's notes or description to link to helpful resources from Treehouse to learn some of these topics. I hope this tutorial helped and you can start building out your projects much faster than you used to. Until next time, happy coding!